Soldier Boy up in this. Oh, watch me crank that. Watch me roll. Watch me get sued for singing Soldier Boy. Get sued for using Soldier Boy as my catchphrase on YouTube. I'm afraid that I'm going to get sued by Soldier Boy sometimes, but I think you're allowed to recite lyrics on YouTube. But I want Soldier Boy to know that I respect him. I'm not making fun of him. We're not singing at you, Soldier Boy. We're singing with you. And you, honestly, Soldier Boy made my seventh grade year of junior high school so much better. We used to do the dance. Actually, I was always scared to do the dance. Everyone else did the dance, and I was like, good job, guys. Like, I get it. But, um, yeah, Soldier Boy, you are a soldier. I respect you. I salute you, Soldier Boy. By the way, before I start this video, I just want to say I'm really excited. I have a new podcast out with my grandma. It's called Drew and Drew's Grandma. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on all that stuff. The links are in the description, or you can just search my name in the podcast app and whatever. Please subscribe to it, because that's how, like, we get on, like, the charts and whatever, and that's really exciting to me, and I don't know why it matters, but it does. And, yeah, uh, please listen to it. I think it's really funny, and I'm recording a new one today, so subscribe, because we're going to keep making them and yeah, yeah, podcast, yeah. Today I wanted to talk about depression. Before I say any of this, I just want to let everyone know, and I think everyone knows this, I am not a mental health professional. I'm pretty sure you know that. I don't think anyone watches my videos and they're like, he's like a, a psychiatrist, right? Like he has a doctorate? No. I, um, this is all from my personal experience. I'm not going to fix you. I don't know any expert opinions or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just telling you what I've learned. I don't feel great. I had something recently happen to me that made me so sad. I was like, I'm so sad I'm gonna scream. Like one of those things that you get happy and then you remember it and it makes you sad again. Like one of those. I'm just like, boo, boo. Actually, boo, boo is what you say to like a baby. I guess you don't say boo, boo to a baby, but you say boo, hoo when you're sad, but you say boo, boo to your dog or your cat. Wanna see my cat? Come here, sweetie. Oh. Actually, I'm afraid of picking, I'm afraid of picking him up because I'm afraid I'll hurt him. So I just want, you heard him, right? So you, you heard him. He's talking. He talks whatever you say his name. Louis! Sometimes. But what I was saying is like, I'm not great. So maybe you shouldn't even take my advice. Like, I know you might be thinking like, oh my God, really? The guy who like, couldn't even get out of bed to make YouTube videos for like a million people to make money, like dancing around for a year. Yeah, that guy, here's my advice, take it. But I am better than like I was a year ago. I am so much better and I have made some changes to my life and my thinking and I just wanted to talk about them and maybe they can help you, maybe. I've had depression since I was like 13. I think I was officially diagnosed with major depression. That's when I caught it. I caught the bug. One of my friends kissed me on the lips and he's like, you got it. And he walked away. It was really? <laughs> really a beep boop right now? But yeah, I've been depressed for a while. I mean, in junior high school, I used to go home every day after school and sleep for like five hours. Like I'd sleep until like 9 p.m. because I just didn't want to do anything. Like I wanted to do what I had to do. And then after that, I was like, why should I be awake? But I got help. I had help from my parents and I went out there and I got help from professionals. And that's the first thing I want to say, which you've heard before, it might be annoying to say, but you have to get help. This is the time to get help. Like if you're someone who has gotten help, obviously you're like, shut up. But if you have yet and you've been like waiting and waiting and waiting today's the day like do it I know it's hard because like some people don't have any money and they don't have insurance and I honestly don't even know what to do about that I'm pretty I, I, honestly I'll google something like affordable stuff there's something like that in the description but it's really worth it like I, I I go to therapy and I have a psychiatrist and I have never gone to either of those and not felt better afterwards it's not perfect and it is hard like finding someone is hard I know what it feels like to like, I've had therapists and then not had them and had to get a new one. Like that thought is so overwhelming when someone's like, you should really see a therapist, which is rude by the way. But when they say that and you're just like, I don't need, how do I, I don't even like, if making lunch sounds hard, like getting a therapist or a psychiatrist sounds like running three marathons in a row. And I know that, but honestly, it's mostly just like Googling, finding your insurance person, and then you have to call someone. And that part sucks. And sometimes they're like, we don't have appointments for two months. And I don't know why they're crying when they say that, but then you have to keep calling and sometimes it sucks. And sometimes you have to call and then sleep and then call and then sleep. And maybe you shouldn't do that. But yeah, it is worth it if you do it. And I'm gonna stop talking now because I'm, that's the end of this point. And sometimes getting help, the first step can be a lot easier than the other ones. You can take it one step at a time. Like you can tell a friend, you can tell your parents, I've been feeling sad. I think I might have depression. Something's going on. I don't feel right. That's the first step. And do that before you worry about anything else. Because honestly, and 
And the other thing is, I don't know why I said honestly and didn't even start saying something, but if you are depressed or you are an emotional person, you've probably convinced, even though it can be hard, you've probably convinced yourself that it's way harder than it really is. If you're depressed, you have irrational thoughts. You know what I mean? Like you blow things out of proportion. So the good news is it's probably easier than you've convinced yourself it is. The thing for me about struggling mentally has been that there's been so much going on in my head that I've just never told anybody. I never talk about it. And it feels so good to talk about things you've never talked about before. That is such a huge relief. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you cry. All the times you cry, I cry. I actually don't cry that much. I feel like everyone's like, I cry, I cry, I cry. And I'm like, I'm too numb. Um, but yeah, it feels good to say something you've never said before. I'm going to do it right now. I'm afraid I'm going to be sued by Soldier Boy. Just kidding. I already said that. I'm honestly, this is like a next level delusion, but I'm afraid I'm going to die on a Sunday. Like every Sunday I get really scared starting at midnight on Sunday. I try not even to stay up that late because I don't want to be there for the beginning of Sunday. At the end of Sunday, I get really excited. And when it's Monday, I'm like, I made it. That's just a true fact. I know that sounds, I'm not going to say a word, but it sounds like a lot. <laughs> Even to yourself, like, try this, like, just sometimes saying it out loud and being like, I'm afraid my friend doesn't like me because they didn't hug me last time we hung out. And then it's like, wait a second, maybe they just don't like Huggies. Huggies is actually like a pull-up or a diaper brand, and everybody loves diapers! So, that's inaccurate. Everybody loves diapers! That's my new catchphrase. I'm gonna start every video by going, everybody loves diapers! What's up, depression heads? And it can be hard because honestly, some therapists are bad. Like I've had therapists before that you get in there and they're like, let me tell you a little bit about me first. And they go on for 20 minutes. I had a guy go on about how he used to be a movie producer for at least 20 minutes. And I was like, I'm not seeing you again. And that part of it sucks because you've like ran the three marathons and you get there and it's not good enough. But I, once again, I'm just telling you that it is all worth it. Getting help is worth it more than like anything, honestly. Baking cookies, that's not even that hard. Like you can bake cookies and it takes 10 minutes and that's worth it. But this is like takes a few days and it's better than cookies. That didn't make sense. <sighs> Maybe I'm amazed at the way you love me all the time. I didn't mean to, know, I, I left this in on purpose. Another thing is if you don't feel like you're ready to get professional help, but you like want to talk to more friends about it, I would say be careful. Not that you shouldn't, but two things I think can happen. Number one, you can overwhelm somebody and you can turn them into your therapist and it kind of messes with the dynamic of your friendship. Like you can just put so much on them. And my mom showed me this like meme thing on Facebook, which is a good way to start a sentence and a point, but I'm just going to say that it was a good point. Oh my God, I'm trying so hard to talk right now. But it said that sometimes it's good to ask somebody before you like totally unload on them to be like, hey, would you be comfortable if I vented to you about a bunch of stuff right now? And sometimes it gives them the option to say no. And like, that's good because it doesn't screw with everything. And number two, the thing that can happen when you reach out to friends for help is that they're really bad at it and it like unmotivates you from getting help anymore. Like sometimes I'll like write a bunch of stuff and it's like the first time I've ever told somebody about this and I've been feeling so bad in the law. And they're just like, oh my God, that really sucks. And you're you're just like, really, Todd? That's what you came up with? I don't know why I came up with the name Todd. I used to have a teacher named Todd, and he was something. Another thing I would say about depression, which is really something that I need to say for myself, is that a lot of times I'll get bogged down by these ideas that sometimes I'll read online or I'll hear in real life that makes me feel like my depression is my fault. Because I feel like sometimes if you tweet about or you like Google, there's always somebody who's being like, people are depressed because they don't, they eat too many hamburgers. Actually, people are depressed because they don't take a walk seven times a day. Actually, you're depressed because you haven't had the right mushrooms before. Actually, you just need to eat these crystals. Don't don't eat crystals. Please don't do it. Don't eat diapers. Ew. Why did I even? Um, yeah, it sometimes can feel like there's people out there saying that you just haven't taken the right steps and there's such an easy way and don't try medication. You have to do this. And that will make me feel like I don't even want to start trying to get better because I'm too lazy already. Does that make sense? But depression and feeling sad, even if you're not diagnosed, it's never, it's impossible for it to be your fault. It's not because you haven't exercised enough because because one of the things, one of the main symptoms of being depressed is that you feel unable to do things. I'm not an expert, but it feels like you're physically unable to do things. It's like there's a light switch of your energy and motivation and it feels like someone literally turned it off. Like, Alexa, please turn off motivation in the living room. Sure, Drew, I'll turn off your motivation and you'll
you'll be scared to open emails today. Something a therapist told me that I think about a lot, there was this one day that I was like, I just keep watching TV all day, and then I'm eating, and I do nothing, and I just feel so sad, and I feel like I can't do anything, and I'm so stupid, and I hate myself. And he was like, Drew, if you're gonna do that today, just accept it and give yourself a break and say, today I'm gonna eat food and I'm gonna watch TV, and that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm going to be okay with it. And sometimes that can be a big thing. I'm not saying do that your entire life, but sometimes you do need to give yourself a break. If you're gonna do it anyway, accept yourself for doing it. Just like sometimes it's as much as watching TV instead of laying in bed with your thoughts. It's a distraction. It's totally okay to distract yourself. Don't judge your depression because depression plus judgment equals worse depression, okay? Einstein had E equals MC squared and I have depression plus judgment equals worse depression. This is an equation that I have figured out the solution to over many years of research. I know that it makes it worse when you feel bad about it and you're just adding something terrible onto something that's already really hard to live with. Another thing I would say is realize that depression is giving you reasons to feel bad and not everything you think is true, it might just be a symptom of your depression. Like, I feel like, I'm not an expert on this, but I feel like sometimes it seems like I'm just in a sad mood and then my brain is like, oh, we're sad. What are we sad about? Like, this person doesn't like me. This person thinks I'm stupid. I did this two years ago that made me look dumb and like, in public. Like, there's just things that aren't true, but they go with the feeling and your brain just matches up to the feeling. So honestly, I love that quote, don't, I think don't believe everything that you think or don't trust your brain or stuff like that. When you're depressed, you have irrational thoughts. You have to recognize them and you have to realize that not everything you think is true, even though it can feel really real. Just because something gives you a feeling doesn't mean that the thought was true. Like if you're going to recognize that you have a brain that is depressed and a little bit foggy with truth and sadness and all of that stuff is mixed in, try not to spend a bunch of time alone in your head. I love that quote, the idle mind is the devil's playground. It sounds kind of scary and I don't mean it in like a religious way that there's literally like a demon <laughs> like inside of you. like literally swinging on swings like it's his playground. I mean, well, I think what it means is that when you are alone, you will come up with things to feel bad about and bad things start to happen when you spend, oh, that's what every therapist I've ever seen has, to, has told me. Drew, stop being alone all the time. Stop sitting down and thinking. Stop laying down and just thinking, thinking, thinking because your brain will go to bad places. That's when the bad things happen. I read something online that I really liked that said, you should use your bed for sleeping. That's what you should do in your bed. And uh, maybe some other stuff. But you should use your bed for sleeping because if you just like do all your, and I get it, like I ate rice cakes in my bed last night and they were a little bit, there was a pinch of spice on them and it was so good. I, it might have been mold because honestly, I have had times where my bed in my old apartment, my the corner of my room that had my bed in it, it became hell and it was like my brain was trained to feel bad in my bed. Do you know what I mean? Like it becomes this pattern where it's like that's where the bad things happen and I literally felt like when when I got in that bed, everything, it just started. Like it was like, rrr, rrr, mad thoughts. <sighs> okay, that's the end of that point. I did an impression of a car. Not to sit or lay around and think about mistakes you've made or think that you've made. It has taken me a long time to learn something that is so obvious that the past, it just already happened. These things have already happened and there's nothing you can do. And I read online that feeling guilt honestly makes you do bad things again because you feel like you're already bad and then you just keep acting that way. Like even guilt for being depressed. If you sit around all day and you're just like, I I'm the depressed person and I'm sad and I just keep not doing anything. The next time you want to not do something, you're like, yeah, because I'm the depressed person who sits around and doesn't do anything. Another big thing for me that I've been trying to change a lot this year is to not spend as much time alone. I accepted for a long time that I'm a loner. I'm just a loner. I spend a lot of time alone. I like watching TV. I like playing the piano. I like trying different shoes on. I don't know why I said that. I'm just imagining myself like putting boots on and looking in the mirror. That wasn't funny. Um, but I have tried to change my life into seeing friends as much as I can, seeing my family as much as I can, even going for a walk and saying good morning to somebody. Just 
having human connection because I'm pretty sure that it's a natural thing and I know it can be easy to be like, nope, that's just not me, that's just not me, but I think the sad, hard, not sad truth, but the hard truth is that we are meant to interact with other people. You can't just go your entire day not even opening your mouth. Like sometimes I would spend two weeks alone and the only thing I would ever even say out loud would be to my turtle when I would go, boo, boo, sweet hi, goo, goo. Like, and that was it. But I meant, you're meant to see people. You don't have to touch them, but look them in the, uh, honestly, don't look up. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say, don't look them in the eye, but I have a hard time looking people in the eye. I had a therapist for like two years and he was like, one day he was like, you've literally never looked me in the eyes. And I was like, I read online that if it's hard for you, you shouldn't try to do it and you should just accept yourself. And he was like, okay. Another thing I would say, and you might have a response to this that's like, but I can't. Try to be creative because I honestly believe that everybody has something to say and that's so cliche, but I think Anybody in this world has something interesting to write down on a piece of paper, something interesting to draw. If you like playing music, you can write a song. It might not be on the radio, but it's really good to have an outlet like that. That has changed my life completely. Right now, what I'm doing is going to make my mental health better. If you want to make a video, if you just want to write in a journal, if you want to doodle, that can be really helpful. Being creative and creating something can make you feel like one with the world for some reason. Last, I think last thing I'm going to say in this video is if you have watched this to the end and you feel like you needed it, that feels like a cocky thing to say, like, you need this, didn't you? You needed this. But if you watch this, I hope somebody watches this till the end. If you watch this entire video, I just want to say, give yourself some credit, because that's something I really need help with and I really struggle with, having positive thoughts about myself, because they're so negative. Another point, something I've been thinking about recently is I need to have, if I'm going to have so many negative thoughts, like every single situation, I'm just like, it must be the negative thing, it must be the negative thing. Why can't I have at least 60-40 with negative and positive? Like, I've been thinking about death a lot and it scares me. And I'm like, what if we go to a bad place after we die? What if the afterlife is worse than the current life? And I thought, why am I so sure that it's going to be the bad one? Can't I at least, at least half believe that if we literally have no idea what happens after you die, that it could be a good thing? Like, um, I know a lot of people just believe nothing happens after you die. This is a strange example. But what I'm saying is that if you're going to believe bad things all the time for things that you have no way of knowing, you might as well try to at least a little bit believe the good things. And what I was going to say before is that give yourself some credit if you're depressed or you're feeling sad or you're a sad person recently. You have been through a lot. It's really hard. It's torture in your brain. You know what I'm talking about. It feels like you're being tortured in your brain and that's a lot to go. That would be a lot to go through if you weren't doing anything else. But you're doing doing that and like you're going to school, you're doing that and you have a job, that's really hard. So give yourself some credit for making it through and being here right now. That is so huge. I know I sound kind of like a kid's TV show right now. I'm about to be like, now take out your notebooks. Ooh, I, I hear your pencil. But um, yeah, give yourself some credit. I'm kind of talking to myself right now. Um, I hope you like this video. I think that I had fun. And I'm going to sing a song now. It's called Leave Me a Calm, Not Very Lonely. Leave me a calm and some very lonely. Ooh, leave me a calm and some very lonely. The ending of that is wah. Thank you for watching this, honestly. Goodbye. Bye-bye.